morning, beloveds. Okay. I'm awake. Not really. And it's a long one today, so let's get into this. It is October 12th. Our title is Omnipresent Life. Our author is Helen Wilmans. This is from Home Course in Mental Science. And it is from 1921. All right. Emerson says, There is but one mind, and that we are all different expressions of it. The mental science student means the same thing when they say that there is but one life, of which we are but individual indiv manifestations. If there is but one life, then life is omnipresent. It fills all space. There is nothing outside of it. Indeed, there is no outside. There is but one life. This life is the universal principle of being that people call God. There is a life principle, and it is unlimited. It is one. It holds the visible universe in place, though it is invisible. It is, self, it is a self-existent principle. It underlies universal law. It is the one law, the law of attraction. And besides it, there is no other law. It is also the very essence of love, and the recognition of it as love is expressed by us in love for each other. All of the races of people have felt the presence and the power of this law of attraction, whose ultimate expression is love or life in a myriad of different forms. The undeviating law has never been violated and will never be. And this is our hope. It is unchanging, diseaseless, deathless, and a knowledge of it conforms us to it in a way that renders us diseaseless and deathless. For the law does permeate all visible forms. It is one with all substance, and no doubt that an expanded and spiritual interpretation of the word God has been the foundation for the expression that God and people are one. For in spite of the personal and therefore limited interpretation of the word God, there have been in all of the ages of the world a few thinkers who were not so entirely confined to its narrow meaning, but they were able to see it in an enlarged spiritual sense, in a sense that proved it to be moving, proved it to be the moving impulse of all visible life. And these people have said God and people are one. What? <laughs> oh, okay. So. Hmm. that was a treat treatise not a treatment a treatise it's like here let me lay out my argument for you and that's exactly what that th that is the it, it it's logic it's like okay because of this this and this and this this is why this exists and that's exactly what that was and it was long and you're like okay so in the end wait what 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 did she say um did the same thing that all the authors are saying. And she started it off by saying, you know, this is what Emerson says, that we're all the expression of one, one life. Uh, and that's really what it comes down to. I was having a conversation with my trainer yesterday and it's like, okay, so one of the ten of it, tenements of our faith is that everything is sacred. Okay. Cause it all comes from the same source. It's all sourced from God. Therefore everything is sacred. Uh, and because we were having that discussion about, uh, we'd gotten off onto Eastern and Western mindsets and one of the problems that that plagues the Western mindset is that everything is a thing. And, you know, so I think we were, <laughs> honestly, we got there because we were talking about vegans. Neither of us have problems with vegans. Neither of us are vegans. Um, for the most part, I'm mostly vegetarian, but not, not 
for any other reason other than my partner does better on a mostly vegetarian diet. So we limit, uh, I, I don't do well on chicken and he does not do well on beef. So, you know, it kind of limits our options. Um, we can both eat turkey and buffalo. Uh, so, so we, we, and, and I, and I believe with, I believe in what Temple Grandin says. It's like, we can raise cows and raise them for meat. But what we can do is we can make their lives, we can make their lives good. And when it comes time to harvest them, we can do it in a, um, what was the word she said? Um, uh, we can do it in a compassionate manner. Okay. So there's not a problem with raising animals for food, but what we want to do is let them live their lives and make their harvests, because I don't want to use the other word, um, compassionate, you know, so that they don't go into it full of fear. We can do that. Do we do that? No. If you look at the, the industry, no, we don't. Th their lives are awful and their deaths are equally awful. So, and, and that's where we were talking about. It's like, because we treat these animals, instead of treating them as living expressions of the one, which they are, that is the argument that Helen is making. These animals that we raise for food are living expressions of the one. Let that, let that sink in for a minute. Okay. And I'm not advocating for uh, vegan. Uh, I'm not even advocating for vegetarian um, because let's be honest, carrots are a living expression of the one as well. So what I'm advocating is, is that we treat these animals that we are raising for food as living expressions of the one and treat them compassionately while they are alive and making their death a compassionate death where it's not full of fear and, you know, squalor and nastiness. You know, we can do that. And that's a weird thing to think about. But there it is. And that's one of the things about the Western mindset is because we treat living things as we treat living beings as things. Whereas when you look a little bit more into the, and, and I, and I will say the Eastern, the mystical Eastern mindset, because it's going to be in the Western mystical mindset as well. So I'm not saying, uh, it's just one of those, you know, cause I have a friend who's a Buddhist, a Buddhist priest, and she does, she will, she is vegetarian, but she will eat meat if it has been prepared for her because her faith says to let nothing go to waste and to not turn down the courtesy of somebody who has prepared food for you in love. Now, that is what Helen is talking about. There's one source. Every single thing that you see Every single being that you see is a representation of that source in some way. Is a Every living being is a living representation of God. We get a little up in our ego as, as human, humans when we say that we were made in God's image. Okay. And then we limit God to that old white man in the sky. I mean, that leaves out half the population. They don't say that God was made in our image. They say God was made in man's image, not even woman's image. So, I mean, that's half the population. So every living thing is made in God's image because God's image is life. It's not the form. It's the living essence principle that animates us. That's what God is. And even that is still too narrow of a definition. And that's what she says at the very end. She says, 
a few thinkers were able to expand their definition, expand the narrowness of that word. And that's one of the reasons why I will say God and I will say spirit and I will say universe and I will say Atman. Because any label we put on God limits God. And it doesn't limit God. What it does is it limits our understanding of God. Just like any label we put on each other limits our understanding of each other. It's like break out of those boxes. Because you can't put God in a box. We can try. So, omnipresent life. Every living being is an expression of God. Every living being is made in the image of God. Everything you see around you Everything is made in the image of God. Let it rock you back on your heels. Let yourself think about that. And see if it doesn't encourage you to make different choices. And that's one of the choices that um, we, we do make. as a, With us being mostly vegetarian... When we do choose to eat meat, one of the things that we do is we look for pasture raised. And that's one of the, cho the choices with buffalo. They're pasture raised. Um, you know, so we can make those choices where when, we, when they say grass fed, okay, well, then they're probably raised in a pasture. They're not living their entire lives in a barn, never seeing the sun, you know, not getting to walk around. So we make those kind of compassionate choices. And I'm not here to beat you up on your choices. Like I said, we are mostly vegetarian for reasons, but we are not. We just try and make compassionate choices when we source our food. Because every living being. All right. <laughs> and I hear Gabby out there. So I have a cat, an 18 year old cat who screams at the top of her lungs. And I recognize that she is made in the image of God. So it is my obligation to listen to her scream at me at the top of her lungs and figure out what it is that she wants. That's the principle. All right. The mission today, should we choose to accept it, is in that first line where she's quoting Emerson. The mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to recognize that there is but one mind and that we all, every living being, are different expressions of it. It's the same mission every day. Honestly, it's the same mission every day. But every day we use different words. One of these days... One of them is going to knock your socks off. I have a funny memory about knocking your socks off. It goes to, back to my Aunt Jimmy Lou. She wasn't wearing socks. And my young cousin wanted the peppers, the dried peppers in a pizza place. And she said, no, you don't want that. They're, they're, it's very hot. It'll knock your socks off. So, so she sprinkled some on her pizza, took a bite, and then showed, her, showed him her feet where she didn't have socks on. He went, oh, <laughs> knock your socks off. All right. Uh, that cousin is, um, you know, in his 40s with a baby of his own and Jimmy Lou, rest her soul, has been gone for probably, I don't even know how long. It's been a while, maybe 10 years. So, but it, it's a cherished memory. Okay, that's your mission today. We're all expressions of the one mind. Recognizing that. The other mission I give you is the same mission I give you every day, which is to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. And occasionally what it does is looking like when you do have that memory come across you, go ahead and relive that memory, experience that memory. It's, it's a cher, that is a cherished memory of me with my cousin, uh, cousin Sean and my, uh, uncle Jimmy Lou. It's a, absolutely is a cherished memory of mine. And, that is loving, kind, and compassionate. Pull those cherished memories up, especially of people who are gone, and remember them. Remember them. Remember the good times. Don't be sad that they are gone. Be grateful that they lived.
momentarily. I'm in a mel I'm in a, a bit of a melancholy mood today, but a good one. A good one. I'm not sad. I'm just wow. Uh, and that's what love, kindness, and compassion looks like. You know, feel the feelings when they come up, all of them. Um, don't stuff them. Feel them. Experience them. Ask them what they have to tell you, and then let them go. All right. Um, and I'm encouraging you to create a habit, a first response, uh, and more importantly, a well-worn path to the source of your being, okay? The infinite source of love, kindness, and compassion. Practice on yourself. That's why I call it a spiritual practice of self-care. Um, absolutely. Practice on yourself. You are your own best test subject, but more importantly, you deserve your own love, you deserve your own kindness, you deserve your own compassion. And if you're going to live a life of service, you can't pour from an empty cup, practice on yourself. All right. I also want to remind you the the to one of the things that I say about eating it, about love, kindness, and compassion is to eat dessert first. I do believe that chocolate is the first step to fixing anything, but it is a reminder that um, we don't know how long we've got. Don't save the good stuff. Go ahead and go out of your way to make the ordinary extraordinary a little more often. Wear the fancy clothes. Use the fancy dishware. Uh, eat the fancy food. You know, don't save the good stuff. Use it now. Use it now. Um, I also want to remind you that joy is a quality of God. We're talking about what God is. Well, joy is a quality of God. No matter what is going on in your life, no matter what is going on in the world, you still deserve joy. Please make room for joy. Every day. Make room for joy. Especially when the days are interesting. And I'm just going to leave it there. Um, making room for that joy is hope. And everybody needs that. So make room for joy. All right. The rest of the self-care Practicing love, kindness, compassion. Basic suggestions. Do something to engage your mind and your body, whether, whatever that looks like for you. Drink plenty of water. Hydration is super important. I will remind you, your brain works better, your body works better, and your skin looks better when you are well hydrated. So drink plenty of water. Uh, and get that early in your day bright light. Uh, we went for that bike ride this morning, and it's fairly cloudy. Um, so I didn't get any sunlight. So the artificial light is helping. Oh, and the globe is on there. And I didn't even notice that the light was <laughs> a little, it's still bright. So it's good. Um, my brother is coming. So I need the, I need to get this room in a little bit better shape. So we put the globe back on the light fixture. Strange things happen around this, in this house. So, um, but seven to nine in the morning, stimulate your vitamin D, stimulate your circadian rhythm, helps you have more energy during the day, helps you sleep better at night. It works. It's science. You can look it up. So, and if you can't get the sunlight, like I said, artificial light will help. All right. And I'm going to end you with my Ernest Holmes quote. These are my self-care tips. Open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around you all the time. Okay. That's what Helen was talking about today. There's one source. It's all God. It's all God. And when we let that rock us back on our heels and we realize, then we realize that the, the, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of heaven, it's a state of mind. It's a state of consciousness. Once you learn that, heaven ceases to be a place you have to get to and can become any place you are. And that's where it's both a state of grace, because once you learn to create it for yourself, nobody can take it away from you. And once you realize that heaven can be any place you are, that's a superpower. All right. So how do you open the windows of your soul? Well, there's a whole lot of ways. And reading books like Courage, Conviction, and Consciousness, that's one of the ways. And allowing the oneness to rock you back on your heels. So, and one of the easy ways to do it, is to take Emma Curtis Hopkins' advice and look for the good and praise it. Count your blessings. If you want to, if you wake up in a grumpy mood, count your blessings. Gratitude will get you everywhere. Do a random act of kindness for somebody or volunteer. There is documented science behind how that works, you know. So try it. You might like it. All right. 
uh, social media. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. I fully encourage you to go check them out. Actually, I've been encouraging people to go back and uh, you can go to the Running Rev Ryan YouTube channel, scroll back to the 2020 playlists, go look at some of the early stuff now and see if, if you think I've gotten better. <laughs> Have I grown? Or am I still telling you the same thing that I was telling you back in 2020? You know, um, I haven't had the courage to do it yet, but I should, right? Um, if you want to know what's going on with the center, email info at creativelife.org. That will get you on the constant contact and uh, the hot links are hot in that email. You get about one a week. It's a real person doing it. He doesn't have time to do more than about one a week. So we're not going to overwhelm your inbox. Um, but the hot links are hot. If it says click here now, it'll either take you right to the information you want, i.e. The, so the soul session playlist on the Creative Life Spiritual Center YouTube channel, which that's a good playlist. Um no, that's a great playlist. Uh, or it'll take you to the person that can help you get the information. All right. And I'm at the part where I get to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonder-filled day, an awesome day, an amazing day, a kindness day, a compassionate day, a check out your memories day, a feel your feelings day, a recognize the oneness day, a acknowledge all living beings in the image of God day. That's a big ask a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. You are enough just as you are. You're a beloved child of God. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. You are a divine spark. You are a brilliant light. Or as Reverend Jesse likes to call us, you're a godling. Know the truth of your being. Okay. Explore the truth of your being. Explore who you are. Who God knows you to be, not who you have been told, especially not by religion and society and culture and gender normatives and people that love you and especially people that don't know you. Explore the truth of your being. Get to know who God knows you to be. All right. And that's what treatment and meditation is all about. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to remind you, Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you around 9 a.m. tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. And I will see you next time.